Hello and good morning again and welcome to our morning devotion insight. This morning I want to share with you a message entitled Building Our Inner Man in Jesus Christ. And my text is from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 9, 14 to 19. And it goes this way. It says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives his name. I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. You know, um, uh, every one of us, we, we have an inner man, an inner, an, an inner being inside of us. You know, uh, Henry Frederick Emil says this, The man who has no inner life is a slave to his surroundings. So we must be able to build our inner self, our inner man, that we will be strong. That's what Paul is saying about just now in Ephesians. Huh? But we want to find out a few things about how we can be able to build our inner man. First, Every Christian has an inner man. Huh? We have an inner person, inner man. And our inner man is our spiritual part. Okay, it says in Matthew 22 verse 37, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. So the heart, the soul, and the mind refer to the inner man. You know, we can see ourselves, this is the outer person. Uh, we can see ourselves physically. But can we see ourselves uh, inwardly? Most times we can't. But we know, even from scriptures, you know, that we have a heart, we have a soul, and we have a mind. Huh? So, we have an inner man, we must also possess, of course, we have an outer man, huh? that is us here. But here it says that our inner man is much more important than our outer man. You know, our outer man will eventually decay. We will eventually go to uh, the grave, we will eventually dust to dust, uh, ashes to ashes. But the inner man is where Paul says that it is so important to build and to strengthen. The strength of the inner man determines our success, maybe against temptation, against things in our lives that we face. You know, Mark 7, Mark chapter 7, verse 21 says, For it is from within, out of a person's heart, that evil thoughts come, sexual immorality, theft, murder. So can you imagine, all these things come from the inside. Huh? So it's because of this, that's why we need to tell ourselves that because we have an inner man, we have to find out more how we can develop this inner man. Secondly, we want to find out what is our inner man. Now, what is our inner man? Like just now, I briefly say this, but we want to um, go deeper. The inner man is a place of man's reason, where we reason. It was Paul's prayer that Jesus Christ should strengthen the reason of his friends. It means how we reason, how we are able to reason things out. He wanted them to be better, to discern between that was what was right and what was wrong. Huh? So when we have an inner man, just means that the power of reasoning. He wanted Christ to give them the wisdom which would keep life pure and safe. That was Paul's desire. That was Paul's prayer for the Ephesians. Huh? It is not just a man's reason, but it's also a place of man's conscience. It was Paul's prayer that the conscience of the people that he loves uh, should uh, ever become more sensitive. Uh, so when we talk about our inner man, just means about our conscience. It is possible to disregard conscience so long that in the end it becomes dull. You know, sometimes we got no conscience. We just do things. We just, you know, continue to do, continue to sin, continue to uh, behave and live. And our attitudes, we have no sense of conscience to say whether it's right or wrong. So Paul prayed that Jesus should keep huh, their consciences clear and on the alert. Then what, what else is that inner man? The inner man is place of man's will. So often we do, we often only know what is right and mean to do it, but our will is not strong. Mm, our will is not strong. Enough to back our knowledge and to carry out our intention. Sometimes it says, you know, uh, uh, the flesh, the, the, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Have you heard of this before? Yes, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. 
you know, and all uh, the inner man is weak. We 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 can't. Uh, we can't. So it says the inner man is the reason, the conscience, the will. The strengthening of the inner man comes when Christ takes permanent residence in the man. So if we want to be strengthened in the inside, then we need to allow Christ to take permanent residence. So thirdly, he said, how do we build our inner man? Mm. That's what we want to talk about, isn't it? That's what is the most important. How do we build our inner man? First is that we build strength and power within. Uh, verse 16, you go back and you read uh, uh, chapter uh, uh, chapter 3 of uh, Ephesians and verse 16, it says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So the word strength here means strong means tough means enduring it means that to have energy or force uh, to act to endure and to resist so the word power means a force and energy might or mighty so here is that when we, we build the inward the believer needs to be strengthened with the power in the inside so that the deepest part of our soul of our heart of our spirit you know, are renewed by God. That that is where the believer must be strengthened with power and with strength. Why? Uh, why? Because it is only it is the only way we can overcome the flesh with all its weakness. Sometimes we know we face temptations. We go through times that are difficult. We we are weak and uh, we can't we can't pers we, we can't push on we can't uh, overcome sin in our lives but and it is the only way we can conquer our temptation and sin trouble and trials disease and suffering grief and death selfishness and worldliness problems and circumstances so how do we build our inner man first is that we need to build strength and power within huh? we need to build strength and power within we need to tell ourselves you know we need to take on the word of god we need to pray in the holy spirit we need to take time to be in the presence of god uh, so that we can be able to be built in our inner man secondly is that build christ rule and reign within 17a says so that christ may dwell in your hearts through faith so this word dwell literally means settle down at home uh, so let Christ dwell in us. Let Christ be the what? Be the King that sits on the throne of our lives. Because why? Dwell means to live permanently, not temporary. Permanently allow Christ to dwell. It means to take up permanent residence, to live in our, us, our lives, to settle down, to be at home. You know, when a person believes in Jesus Christ, to enter their hearts and live and lives of believers, Christ is already. In our hearts and in our lives isn't it? the day when we receive jesus we say come into my heart be my lord and savior that's the day that we are, we invited jesus but somewhere along the line huh we say no need lah. you know it's okay jesus you don't have to have permanent residence only when i need you but no that's not the way huh? so we must be rooted we must be grounded so that we know that when we are able to be strong you know build Christ rule means that we must be rooted in him grounded in him that let him reign let him be the one that will direct our lives our emotions our soul our mind huh? and then not only that but we need to build strong love within you know 17b says what that we will be able to have the know the depth of your love how wide how deep how high how uh, how broad is the love of god so we need to build on the love of god within that we will love god with all our heart and soul and mind huh? the, the the word just means that we are able to grasp grasp means what comprehend grasp means we are able to apprehend we are able to say lord i i i can learn how to be able to know you i love you grow in you be able to understand your love for me is from everlasting to everlasting and last is that build a full understanding uh, of spiritual things within says verse 19 and to know this love that surpass all knowledge that you may be filled to the measure you know meaning that we are continually allowing god to fill us in the inside you know just imagine picture a glass filled halfway with water is the glass of water half full or half empty 
Hmm? So some people will say half full, others may say half empty, but full is a matter of perspective in this case again. Why? Because some Christians are content with just either condition. They say, okay, it's okay, like I'm fat, half empty is okay, half full is okay. I'm not. Uh, we should not. It is said that we need to be filled. We need to be full of Him. You know, we need to, Paul tells us that the measure is Christ. We need to be full of the measure of Christ and that we cannot boast about anything except that there is the fullness of the measure of Christ. When we reach His fullness, then we have reached the, that limit. Huh? So to build our lives to the inner man, we need to tell ourselves, do you and I know Christ? Or do you and I know Christ for who He is? Do you and know? Do you and I know His love? Do you and I allow Him to uh, have that full measure in us? Do you and I will say, God, I really want to build that inner man. Not only just the word of God, not just only prayer, not just only waiting upon God, but really in my life that I will have that fullness. Uh, that that fullness that will say, God, I will be strong in Him because I choose to build my inner man. Amen. So I pray that all of us, we will, just like Paul prayed for the Ephesians, that we will choose to build our inner man. Amen. God bless you and have a great day.